Hello everybody, Mike here again uh, with another quick tutorial. Uh, this one does have to do with cloth. I'm sure that's why you're here. Um, but we're going to try to get through it as quickly as we can because uh, if I type myself right, we should have just enough time to get under that 10 minute mark. So what we're going to do today is we are essentially going to extend the last cloth tutorial where we were kind of setting the uh, the plane down on the box. This one is actually we're going to do more of like a flag. So this has a lot to do with uh, attaching the cloth to an object, you know, letting it hang like curtains, uh, the flag here, for example. And we're going to take this a little bit farther. That's why I kind of have to hurry. Um, but anyways, the setup is pretty much the same, right? We've got uh, a collision object, which would be the pole. We've also got the cloth, which is our flag. And it's just a plane that is, uh, if we look at it from the top, is you know pretty close and pretty even to the middle of the cylinder. That's just for realism there, nothing uh, too significant. So um, one thing to note is I don't have a whole lot of geometry on the plane. That's just because you know crunching numbers and whatnot. We want this to go fairly quickly so I can get to that little extra piece at the end. So uh, with that in mind, we're just going to run through. Uh, the setup like we did in the last video, you know, add the cloth modifier. Uh, let's set the plane to cloth, and we'll set it to silk just so it has a lot of uh, movement. And then we'll add the cylinder, and we will add that as a collision object uh, just in case. Okay, so now cylinder has cloth applied. Just double check these because we definitely don't want to get the setup wrong. Okay, and uh, just for brevity, since I ran through this earlier, I'm just going to add two on the self collision just in case, uh, and then we will, you know, obviously if we hit simulate now, it's just going to fall through because act, uh, gravity's acting upon it. It's just going to, you know, fly down through the ground. That is nothing there. So instead before we hit simulate, we are going to attach this to the flagpole. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the front view here. That way I can look at it right on. And what we want to do is we actually want to look at this, uh, the rightmost edge of this plane. Um, and we want to attach this to the pole so that everything else can deform and flow in the breeze uh, like it should. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to open up the cloth. And what we need to do is create a group. So we'll go to the first option, which is group. And we will say, let's select these ones over here. You'll notice they all turn red because they're selected. And let's make a group. And uh, I'm just going to name this seam for whatever reason, just so it's easily identified. And you'll notice that in the group window here, uh, it says, hey, you've created a, a group. It's unassigned. So what we want to do is we want to assign it to the cylinder, but we want to do it at the surface level. So we're going to hit surface. And with this group selected, we're just going to click on the cylinder. And what you'll see is it says, hey, your, your group seam is uh, surfaced to the cylinder. So if we want to go back here, and let's rename this flagpole. Come back to the cloth. You'll see seam is now surfaced to flagpole. Everything should be set up at this point just so everybody knows. That's how quick it can go. We make a group. We select the vertices to be in that group. They will turn red. And then we do a surface attachment to uh, the object that we have. Now this object, after we do our simulation, can go away. And the simulation will still be there. Um, but for right now, we're, we're going to keep it in our scene. Uh, much for like curtains, which we'll, we'll do later, because I've got a little something extra for that too. Um, we would do a, a surface attachment for that as well. All right, so let's go back to our cloth. Let's see if this is going to work here. Go to perspective view, and let's hit simulate local. And hey, everything is working, right? First try is is always always rewarding. All right, so we simulate a local. As you can tell, if we look at it from the front, this line really hasn't moved. Now it'll deform, it'll kind of fluctuate, but for the most part it should never completely detach itself from whatever you've got it surface to. It, for the most part, will stay there. Everything else is falling. Uh, we're starting to get the, the waves coming in from the deformities. Let's turn wire frames off there. 
Let's get back in here. And everything's happy. And so let's do this just a little bit longer. And as we can see, if we look at it from the front again, you know, things are going well. The self collisions that I added uh, looks like it is holding up very well. We can come in after the fact, and this isn't actually colliding with the collision object either. We can come in after the fact and, and uh, round the corners out of this plane just like we did before, you know, adding the shell, adding another layer of turbo smooth, making it, it nice and, and pretty. So that is how you make a group, attach it to the surface of another object, and I'm pretty sure you can figure out curtains from here. You just put the cylinder on the top, right? And then the, the cloth and the plane hang down from it. Now, this isn't everything. This is the part that I wanted to get to so I can just add a little bit of fun here. Um, and that is, when we start talking about curtains or flags, obviously the, the natural state of those things is just to hang down. But there's also outside elements that affect it, such as wind, right? So if you want a curtain that is blowing in the breeze, if you've got, uh, just like an architectural scene, you want some more deformity or more liveliness to it, especially a flag if it's hanging from a ship, it's probably blowing in the breeze, right? So let's play around with that for just a second here. Turn on my grid so I know where I am. Let's go over to Create Panel. Go to... Uh, Space warps here, and let's just grab wind. Doesn't really matter how big that is, it's just a representation of which way the wind's blowing from. And I'm just gonna dip this that way. And what we can do is uh, let's pick up the strength a little bit and let's play with this. Um, so let's go back to the cloth. And what you'll notice is we've got ob object properties and I've also got cloth forces. If I open up cloth forces, hey, there's my wind. These are the forces in the scene. Here's the forces in the simulation. Let's just send that to the other side and hit OK. And then let's reset the state of that cloth. We know that it's working. But now we want to make sure that the wind is acting upon it correctly. Now the wind is coming from this direction and it's blowing up and to the left. So with any luck, if we just hit simulate local, might not be strong enough. Or I may have forgot to bind it. So what we want to do is we want to click on bind to space warp and what we're going to do is we're just going to grab our wind and attach it to the cloth. Okay. So now you'll notice that the cloth has this wind binding. It's also a force in the in the simulation and let's reset that state and let's try it again. That may not work as well as I wanted it to. So let's do this. Let's stop that, reset the state again. Let's say, wind, you're not strong enough. Or maybe we're just, there we go. It's starting, but the self collisions are just way too much. So we're gonna stop that local. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do damped instead to give the wind a little bit more time to figure into the simulation with any luck we'll get it here and it looks like we are you'll see that these waves are starting to flow in an upward direction the the uh, gravity isn't having as great of an effect on it um, so with wind whenever you're figuring in forces chances are you're going to have to do it at a slower pace in terms of simulation now just to uh, give us one other small little taste here. Let's do this. Let's add a bitmap to it, and I think I got a pirate flag. Just for this nice special occasion. And let's keep that going. And so now you can actually see the wind rippling through the flag, and it looks pretty good. Uh, we're at about nine and a half minutes, so that kind of worked out. Anyways, uh, here's just another extension of cloth, the ways that you can have fun with it. Um, wind and space warps, those are a whole other subject that we could spend weeks and weeks upon. Um, so if you need any instruction on that, just watch this video again. <laughs> and uh, and just watch where I click. I try 
try to go a little slow, but I had to go a little fast. So, uh, anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, ask them down in the comments. Uh, otherwise, you know, just keep grinding and uh, uh, keep at it. You will definitely get it. If you're getting mixed results than what I got, uh, just keep on following step by step. But, the, the mastering comes a step at a time. So anyways, uh, again, thanks for watching. Again, uh, ask questions if you have them. Otherwise, we will see you in the next tutorial.